Hey everyone, Kerry here with Ask Colette, presented by Rudis. Hey, if you got any questions or comments, leave them at the bottom of this video. Um, not really a question this week, something I, I, I just kind of wanted to share and, and something that hit me um, from a conversation I had with, with someone. So, um, you know, we, we had our intensive camp. It was 10 days long. It was a couple weeks ago. Uh, we had 40 kids here um, training. Uh, you know, of the 40, I think, um, you know, 33 or 34, you know, finished the 10 day cycle, the 10 day program. If you know an intensive camp, look, an intensive camp is not designed to um, really get you ready or peak you for anything because it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work over 10 days. Um, you know, and if we were peaking for something, we'd make sure we had adequate, you know, physical rest uh, in the course of that period if we were getting ready for something. It's about teaching kids that they can do more. My goal for the camp every year is that. When they're done with that workload of 10 days, when they go home, I always tell them now, after everything you've done over a 10-day period, basically working out four times a day between on the mat three times, a run, uh, a stadium run, a long run, a calisthenic program, combative drilling, live wrestling, um, you know, how much can you now do when you go home for your coach in a two-hour period? Um, and that's what we, we try to get them to do is show them how much more they can do in two hours and how two hours is, is, is a very small amount of window of time in the course of 24 hours in a day when you're training and you're getting ready and you're, and you're trying to make, improve your body and improve yourself mentally. And so day two, three, four is always the worst day, right? Guys are fatiguing. They're running and, and then they're, they're doing stadiums and, and then they're doing calisthenics and then they're on the mat three times a day. And what we do is we inch them up. You know, we start that first run. It's only three miles. It's, they're up. They're starting the run at 6.30. A lot of kids don't want to be up and working out at 6.30. So that's part of the process and the change. The next time it's a, it's a stadium run where they're, they're going up 20 20 times, you know, um, you know, the next night is, is a calisthenic, a five round program where it's half the numbers um, in their, you know, pull ups and push ups and sit ups and burpees and, and all these things. And it's a program they can use and take home if they don't have a weight room. Um, and then the next time we, we do that, you know, that run goes from three miles, it goes to four miles and the stadium goes for 20 ups to, to 25 or 30 ups and the calisthenic program, the reps increase. Or, and if you're already at full reps, your time has to come down. Day three or four, these kids are ready to die. When you get to the last day, that's our final challenge. That's where we wake up. And, and these guys, their final challenge was 40 ups on the stadium, over to the wrestling room, calisthenic program, five rounds, full numbers, and then a seven mile run. And you know, the night before I gave them this talk and, and our social media guy had put it out there and, and basically we talked about how in a 10 day period you can't physically change. It's 10 days isn't enough to, to change your body to where you couldn't run seven miles. All of a sudden you can run seven miles. If it was that easy, people would be running marathons in a matter of, you know, two weeks of training. Right. And it's the mental part. And that's what I told him. You can start the process of changing your body, but we haven't built you up enough in that short amount of period, period of time to really change. We changed them mentally. And we did it by inching them up. And it comes back to like what we, I've always referred to as, as drops in the bucket. And, and I stole this concept. I did it as an athlete. I think most people have little things that they do, and, and I did it. But you can't always verbalize it in a language that, that it, it hits everybody else. And, um, you know, I got a book that, that I, I got from Tom Ryan, and it was after Tom Ryan had won the national tournament. And we were, we were talking, and, and um, you know, he had, he had told me that this is a really good book. You need to read it and have your, your freshman read it. It's what he did with his guys, you know. And, and you can't be so competitive that you're not looking, you're not trying to learn from other coaches. Same as an athlete. I, you can't be so competitive that you lock yourself in a box and you hide all your technique and you're never trying to get out there and advance your technique or use it against other people um, you know so Tom is a guy I, I use as a resource you know quite often um, and the book is called Slight Edge and basically it talks about you know a simple thing that you've heard your, your entire life getting up at 6 a.m. and doing 10 push-ups doesn't seem like a lot doesn't seem hard getting up at 10, 10, 6 a.m. isn't easy doing 10 push-ups is easy and that's the problem is people don't see the value in in slight adjustments right 10 push-ups not hard to do um, but what happens is when somebody develops a habit of getting up at 6 a.m. and doing 10 push-ups or getting up at 6 a.m. and running one mile, that habit starts to change them mentally. And then that habit, what they happens, they realize, hey, I can do 100 push-ups and I can get up and I can run three or four miles. See, it's the creation of that habit formation in anything that is good for you, anything, no matter how small it is, anything that is good for you, when you develop a habit of doing it over and over again, you're going to find out you can increase the workload or you can in in increase the, the, or shorten the time. That's what's going to happen. And as a coach, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get this slight difference every day and these habits every day. 
And it brings me back to that talk I, I had with those guys. In a 10-day period, we didn't change them. We started to change them mentally is what they started to do, and they understood it. And I got a lot of letters from a, a couple kids who, who, after the camp, said, Coach, I really re realize now I know what I can do in two hours, right, after working out four times a day. And the conversation that, that hit me is after that, that was on social media. I went over to a local restaurant where we eat, and there's a, a woman there named Marsha. And she said, Coach, I, I listened to your talk you gave to those kids who did that, you know, intensive camp of yours. And she said, I'm trying to diet. And she goes, you're right. Like, if I can't change mentally first, and I'm always caught up on the physical side of it and getting on the scale every day, and I don't change my mind and change the habits, which is whatever it may be, you know, not eating past 8, 8 p.m. at night, you know, uh, it, picking, making the right choices. You have to have those habits first. And it doesn't matter if it's slight. It doesn't have to be huge at the beginning. Um, but once you start to do that, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's, it's the same if you're, you're part of the older generation listening to this. We all do it. I want to get in better shape. I want to lose some body fat. So what do you do? You go run out. You go run 10 miles, especially if you're an ex-wrestler. You're like, I'm going to go do one of my old workouts. Can't do it. Body's changed. You have to slightly build yourself back up into it. You know. So instead of running 10 miles, you better start just running two. You know, because what happens is you run 10 miles, you get so sore, you're done for five or six days and you can't move. And then you don't work out for five or six days and the habit is going the other direction. Um, so it's about being smart with your mental approach as a coach with your guys. And I had gotten someone uh, an email this year from a guy who said I had a team of kids who, who weren't that skilled yet. I had them all read it, had the parents read it. And he said, it changed my program. He said, we really started seeing the value in all the slight differences that we had made in, in these positive categories. Because if you have a team uh, of kids who are not highly competitive yet and are working on the fundamentals, if you try to measure that program on wins and losses and you can't find the value in the, in the, the differences that you make, you're set up for losses. Um, you know, and that by, might be as well. I always use the example. You lost by 10 points. Next time you only lost by four points. You had made a difference. You had obviously improved somewhere. And it doesn't happen overnight. And so he had his whole program on that, finding all those little wins that they got. And he said, over time, he goes, we, we weren't knocking it out of the park and we didn't have a ton of wins. He goes, but we had a significant amount of improvement. And now he seems to be really excited about next season. And I think his team and his parents are excited about next season. So he's got them on the, on the right path and the right approach um, to this sport because it's, it's not easy. But All right, well, that was it. I just wanted to share that with you, and um, I'll talk to you all next week.